Hey, this is Mr. Hendrickson, and this is your conceptual physics moving inertia prelab. Your setup is going to look something like this. You'll have two carts that start in the middle. You'll release a spring, and they'll move underneath the photo gates. The photo gates are here attached to the poles. You'll notice the one on the left is attached to a ring stand. Do not, in any case, move the ring stand. When the carts aren't in use, they should be placed on their sides because they will roll off the table very easily. Take note of the number on the cart and the corresponding photo gate. Make sure that the carts and the photo gates are aligned when you do the lab. The carts will start close together, exactly together for that matter, and the spring will be loaded. Don't place a gap in between the carts. The results will not be good, and you'll have to do the trial all over again. Make sure the carts are touching when you unload them. When the picket fence goes through the photo gate, make sure the lights are going off. As you add mass to your carts, you'll notice that there's a universal mass docking system. Please use it to ensure that the masses do not roll off or fall off the carts. When the carts are touching, the results should look something like this. Make sure one partner hits collect and the other partner fires the cart off. Now time for a couple hints to make sure your lab runs as smoothly as possible. Number one, make sure you use the wooden peg activators to release the spring. It should take one quick motion and the spring should be released. Number two, make sure that there's a significant difference between the first and second cart when you fire them. You should notice the difference in your data. Number three, make sure the carts are at rest and touching before you release the spring. If they move at all, you'll have to start the trial over again. And number four, make sure your partner hits the green collect button before you release the spring. If not, you'll have to do the trial over again. To collect your data, simply click on the green button in the upper right hand corner that says collect. Your data will look something like this. You'll need to scale it so you can get a better view of it. Take notice, what you're actually collecting here is displacement versus time. And we want to find the slope of this line. The way we do that is by clicking on the linear fit button. The linear fit button will give us the slope of this graph. As we zoom in, we'll notice that the slope here is given to us in meters per second. I wonder what that could tell us. Notice this also has a positive slope. And well, the second graph has a negative slope. I wonder what positive and negative slopes in a DT graph represent. You have to think about that. Once you have that information, you'll need to chart it into your lab and continue on to your next trial. As always, have fun and make sure you read the directions. Good luck.